Hey guys, Mel the Train Shooter back in the studio and back with another tutorial for you. Now we're continuing with our Turf War Z zombie apocalypse sort of build and in this video I'm going to be taking you through how I took the basic Sarissi, Sarissa city block range and how I converted them and how I painted them up and flopped and foliaged them and got them ready for the zombie apocalypse. So I'll be taking you through and showing you the various simple steps and they are actually quite simple, yeah? that I use to sort of bring it all together and produce some awesome terrain. So, shall we get cracked on? Come on! Now I'm in the process of taking these Sarissa Precision buildings and sort of preparing them for the zombie apocalypse. Now this is one I've already started on and you can immediately tell the difference between the two. But, there's a bit of groundwork that you have to do first. Inside here, yeah, obviously you've got all these blank windows. Now, inside here, and I can't open it because this is all glued, yeah, these are all blanked off, i.e. they've got a bit of black card. Yeah, and what I've got is, got a little bit of plastic card, I've given it a black primer, yeah, I'm going to cut bits off that, and I'm just going to drop them behind these windows, yeah, and that's going to black them out. So I'll crack on with that now, and we'll come back when that's done. Right, working to seal up all these these windows, and if I turn around to the front, see them all nicely blacked out? Yeah, so if I turn them around to the back, you can see the gopping work. Now basically all I've done is hot glue at the bottom, hot glue at the top, yeah, and that's holding those panels in perfectly. Yeah, so very quickly, yeah, last one on the on this top floor. Yeah, get me a little bit of plastic card. What I'm going to do is basically just drop it in there. Yeah, I'm going to hold it at the top. Yeah, same time. My hot glue gun, I'm using hot glue because it's quick and easy. I could use super glue, yeah. I wouldn't recommend PVA with it being plastic, yeah. Let's see, I've just put a bit of hot glue in the bottom of there, and then I'm just going to run some across the top of here. Now, the reason that I'm doing it this way and holding the, the plastic card on rather than putting the glue on the card and then sticking the card in is if I put the glue on the underside, this sort of side of the card, I could squeeze it and it could come out the edges of the windows. Yeah, or it could be too thick and it could actually leave a gap by putting the plastic straight up against it and then gluing it. What I'm, what I'm doing is essentially I'm making sure that that covering is completely flush. Now, now those are done. Yeah, what we're going to do is, I'm going to drop some PVA onto there, yeah, yeah, and I'm just going to build it up and make it one solid piece, yeah, so you can't get on the inside of it, so, I better crack on, Anna. Now, here's a finished piece, and if you've seen it, you can see all the planking and, you know, a grill work on that, and it looks rather good. Now, there's a couple other things that I've done. Yeah, on a few different pieces. Now take a look at these. Now this is a corner piece and a shop unit. And for these what I've done is, rather than board them up, I've broken off the little slats that were in between these windows. And that's because I'm going to burn these out, okay? And so these would have burnt out. And so basically I can black the windows and have smoke effects coming up on them. It means I don't have to plant them. Yeah, and then further down, if I bring this up, yeah, this is just plastic card from Will Scenics and a little strip of plastic card across the tops to make some shutters. So we've got those there, and then on this one we've done exactly the same, you know, I've ripped out the door there, yeah, we've grilled up the bottom, yeah, we've ripped out the windows here, and we've, let me get it right, get it in front of the camera, folks, we've shuttered those up as well. Okay, now it's time to start priming these up, yeah, I've already done a test prime, yeah, and they're going to start coming something like this, okay, but, you know, I need to get cracked on, so I will get cracked on and do some priming, yeah, and I'll show you some photos as I go. Okay guys, and I've finished priming this up, okay, now I've done all the walls, yeah, I've left the top bare because I'm going to paint that grey. Now, to, to actually spray paint it, what I did is I used this which is Army Paint of Fur Brown, which is a terracotta brown. And it works really well for brickwork. It needs a little bit of weathering, which I'm gonna show you anyway. Yeah, but I thought this would be a good piece just to finally take you through all the techniques, yeah, on how I put those buildings together. Now, obviously, yeah, the brickwork's primed, but I've got more work to do on it. So very quickly take you through what I'm gonna be doing on it. Yeah, at the top, all of this, yeah, these bars, this bar, and all the ground, and the stairs, etc. Yeah, I'm going to be doing with a grey. 
Yeah, this is just bog standard house paint, watered down a little with a tiny little bit of flow aid in. Yeah, the railings I'm going to be doing in a black. And then I'm going to be doing these boards and these windows. I'll probably do the windows in a blue or some, the, the, the window frames in a blue. And then obviously the wooden boards, yeah, if I bring them up, yeah, I'm going to do those in a brown. Yeah, now this is just base coating. This isn't anything fancy. We're just going to get the colours on. So that's my next job. Okay, so I'm going to crack on with that now. And I'll bring it back once, you know, the colours are actually on and it's looking a bit better, yeah? All right, see you shortly. So we've got our building base coated and if I bring it up, there you can see, okay? No, but considering it was all done with primers and an airbrush, eh? Rather good. Now, as you can see, yeah, I have gone for essentially base colours. Yeah, we've got the fur brown, uh, we've got the leather brown on the windows, ultramarine blue on the, what you call it, on the window frames. We've gone for a black on the railings, the grills, the back windows. Yeah, you can see them there. Yeah, the grey is a uniform grey. Now, I've, I've used an emulsion mainly, yeah, and then touched up with army oh, paint, uniform grey. But if I bring it up to the camera, yeah, you can see that there's a difference between that side and that side. And that's because the grey is a large area. It's quite expansive. Okay, now with the small areas that are broken up, yeah, we can do our work and our detailing with washes. Yeah, but when it comes down to large flat areas of grey, you really need to break them up. You can get away with doing washes, but a little bit of extra variation in there works really well. Now for that, I'm just stippling. So what I've got is, I've actually picked up some house paint. Yeah, a little bit of a Wilco's, a touch of silver. Yeah, I've got just a little bit on my brush. Yeah, I've wiped the excess off and all I'm doing is stippling. Yeah, so just, hello, just coming in. And stippling it like this. I should zoom in, shouldn't I? I zoom in. And all I'm aiming to do is just break that grey up. I don't have to worry about being too precise. I don't have to worry about getting a finished concrete texture or anything like that because we're going to be weathering it. Yeah, all I need to worry about is I don't want large flat expanses of grey. Yeah, so a little bit more. And, and there we have it. So if I bring that back up, yeah. Hey, oh, doesn't that look beautiful, eh? Worked a treat. Now you will notice that the paintwork on this is a little bit sloppy. Zoom out, folks. Now that's okay. It's okay for your paintwork to be a little bit sloppy with this technique because, yeah, the washes are going to cover 99% of your mistakes, and the other 1%. No one's going to spot anyway, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, so don't worry about it. Okay, now I need to give this a wash to start the washing detail, i.e. the general wash to get the shading in there, then the specific detailing washes. Okay, uh, so, in fact, yeah, there's something I need to do first. Two secs. One last stage before we actually get to the washing, okay? And this is to apply the rust to our railings. Now, I've given these a base coat of black, and then what I've got is, I've got a bit of the good old GW Fiery Orange. Yeah, look at that, that's bright, isn't it? Yeah, just a little bit on a bit of a plastic tub, yeah? And all I'm gonna do is dab, yeah? Literally dab it in various places on the railings, okay? You don't want the patches to be too big when you do this, okay? Uh, if, they, if they're too big, it doesn't work with the washes. Yeah, this, this technique works really well with tiny little bits of orange. So I'm gonna do this and I'll bring it back to you once it's done, yeah? So all our orange spotting is done and it's looking rather nice and it's time to watch it to get ready to do the washing which is what's going to give it its dirty gritty sort of old look. Yeah now what I've got here is I've got a wash I've made up it's got a little bit of flow aid some water and its base is what you call it acrylic it's burnt umber lovely brown that is but I've also got a little tub of just clear water here 
Now the reason for the clear water is when you're applying a wash, and we'll go for this side so it's nice and easy for you to see, yeah, if I apply that straight onto there, I could get staining where the, the paint goes directly onto the watch colour, onto the, onto the surface, yeah, and sticks to it, adheres to it. Yeah, and you get patches, and it doesn't allow me to play around with it much. So what I'm going to do is get my water, I'm just going to brush it on quickly, very quickly. So that's my piece all watered up, which means when I come along with my wash, it flows all over it and I can just apply it and I don't have to worry about it sticking anywhere, yeah? So yes, it is messy, yeah, this is going to bring out all the bricks, it's going to give a bit of a shade and a bit of variation onto things, it's going to give mud stains, yeah? It's going to look wonderful. Okay, so that's the job at hand. Next job I've got to do is just apply this all over it. Okay, so I'll crack on with that and back in a sec, guys. So that's our general shading wash done. And as you can see, yeah, it's already changing the look of the piece. Yeah, obviously it's doing it up, but we're starting to get more realism as the sort of shadows start forming and, and, the, and, the, sh and the wash sort of gathers itself in the corners. Okay, now, a wash will give us lots of detail, but a broad wash will not fix everything, yeah? It will cure, say, 60, 70% of, you know, your errors, but we still need to go in and detail it up. But I can't do that until this is completely dried. So I need to leave this for a little while, and then when it's dried, we're gonna come back and we're gonna do a bit more specific washes, yeah, and add a little bit more detailing to it, okay? so. I'll see when this is dry, guys. Now that our general wash is dry, if I bring it up, there you go. Yeah, beautiful, isn't it? Right. Now that that's dry, it's time to start adding the more specific details because it was just a general one to add shades and that sort of stuff. So what I'm going to do is dead simple. I've got some more of my burnt umber, but I've mixed a little black in with it just to darken it up. Whenever you're working with water and you're thinning things down, you will lose the strength of the colour. Yeah. So with this technique, I need to darken it up. Now, yes, I could have gone for a darker brown, but I prefer to keep things within the same Pantone. Okay, the same colour. Yeah, now I've got a soft brush here and I'm going to do tops and tails. Yeah, so I'm going to just brush some water across the bottom of there. I'm going to brush some water just across the top of there. Yeah, I don't need to flood it. I just need to make sure this stuff doesn't stick. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in. Yeah, a little, in fact, a little bit of water. Yeah, a little bit on my brush. I'm just going to come in and just sort of smear it around. Yeah, and then straight away, if I bring that up, yeah, do you see the dark shading just above there as the dirt is gathering? Okay, and then finally, the other technique is we wanna put some streaks in this, some weather streaks. Now these are really easy, yeah, you just go up to the top and you just draw little lines down. Don't worry about if they're too fat or anything like that. Just get the lines in initially. A bit more, a bit stronger I think for this. A bit too thin. Of course it's gotta be done over wet, otherwise this technique doesn't work, yeah? So once you've got your basic streaks in, yeah, what you can do is you come along with your brush. Oh, wrong brush, <laughs> silly boats with your damp brush and you can just feather them out and just clean them up, yeah? So feather out that edge. This is the benefit of working on a wet surface. It allows you to change things. So if I bring them up, yeah, streaks. So the next job I need to do is I need to weather this up a bit, you know, get a bit more dirt on it and get it looking right. So I'll crack on with that and we'll come back once that's done.
So that's our dark umber washing done. Okay, and if I bring it up for you, yeah, you can see the streaks. You can see how I've used it to stain the woodwork and get that grain in it. Yeah, and you can see how I've used it on the black, what shall it, railings. Yeah, with that we put the orange on and how it's knocked it back to make it look like rust. Yeah, and it's all come out rather nice. Yeah, I'm rather chuffed with it. But we are we still have a bit of a problem, yeah, which are these large blank spaces. Now, okay, they're perfectly fine. You could leave them like that, you know. There's nothing wrong with this. This model is good to go right now if you wanted it to be. But, you know, we want to do a bit more on it, yeah. And that means I want to graffiti it up, much like the rest of the Turf War Z buildings. Okay, now I've got a couple of options for this. So, let me get the options together. I'll be back in a second. So when it comes to adding the graffiti, with the Turf War Z project, I did it with an airbrush. Okay, yeah, it was the easiest way of doing it, and I'm, that's what I'm going to do on this one. But I'm not going to demonstrate airbrushing, that is a whole different video in itself. And I know that a lot of you will be getting going, yeah Mel, but, you know, I haven't got an airbrush, so... <laughs> Thanks mate, thanks for that. Don't worry guys, I got your back. Right, so, obviously I did mine with an airbrush, but I reached out to someone who really knows about graffiti. I reached out to a guy called Dred Lun. Yeah, uh, Solvent Abuse UK is his YouTube channel, and I'll throw a link up to it. Seriously, go check Dred out, he's an awesome modeler. Yeah, but he does graffiti really well, and he put me onto a couple of different avenues that I wanna show you. Yeah, for you guys who wanna go down that option. Now, first off, these. Okay, you can actually get scale model, what you call it, uh, graffiti. So it's no different than the transfers, yeah, that we put on our models, yeah. You know, it's a little bit difficult putting it over where you've got a texture and that sort of stuff, like the brick texture, so you're going to need some Microsol and Microset, yeah. Uh, Microsol dissolves the sort of backing that's on this, so it, it sinks into the cracks, yeah. A Microset is a special sort of... Best way of des uh, of describing it is it's a transfer varnish, yeah? So, but using those two, you can lay these things down on a regular surfaces and get them to set and, and literally fix in place, yeah? So, there's that option. Now, there's another option, and that's these. Marker pen, almost. This is an acrylic marker pen, okay? And so, let me pick a corner. Which side shall I photograph it from, yeah? What you can do is you can come along, you can get your acrylic marker with acrylic paint in and go. And it's as simple as that. Okay. Now you can get these in various different nib sizes, yeah, but it is acrylic paint. It will dry like acrylic and all those sort of things. Okay, so now I don't want there to be just one, so let's put a TT there. I'll leave it at that. We'll throw some other stuff on it. So you've got acrylic marker pens as well. Remember, the nibs come in different sizes, yeah? So you can always find, you know, finer ones, longer ones, all sorts of things. So that's an option for you. But what I really need to do is I need to get stuck in with this and I need to spray it up and start getting some graffiti on it. And with that, like I say, I'm using my airbrush. If you're interested, it's a Badger Patriot 105 and I'll be using the Minotaur paint range, yeah, when I paint through that because that's Badger's paint range for airbrushing. And that's what I used on the, what you call it, on the Broken, on the broken Spirits Turf War Z project. So, I've got some airbrushing to do. And there we go, yeah, dead simple, just squiggles and lines, yeah, nothing really definitive on this one, but it just breaks it up and that's what we're aiming to do, you know, the idea was we need to break up the large bare patches, and a bit of squiggly graffiti works really well, but remember, like I say, there are those pens, there are those transfers if you, if you don't have an airbrush, yeah, so don't worry about it. Remember, you can also get stencils that you can use, what you call it, uh, spray primers with, yeah, to get graffiti down, so there are other solutions for you guys.
Yeah, now the next job is, yeah, that I want to give this a spray and varnish it up. Now we still do have, need to add a little bit of flock and just, you know, a little bit of overgrowth on it. Yeah, but before I do that, I want to give it a spray of this. Now this is Pro Matte, yeah, from, they're called Pro XL. Yeah, there's a web address somewhere on it. Pro, there you are. If I bring that up, can you see that, guys? Yeah, proxl.co.uk with a dash in. Yeah, this is brilliant stuff. It's about £9 a can. Yeah, it's a car lacquer. Yeah, but it's completely matte, dries in an hour. Yeah, tops, it goes on pretty heavy, but it dries and there's no gloss whatsoever. And you need to varnish these, and I'll show you why. Yeah, if I bring this up, yeah, do you see there? That's why you need to varnish them. If you don't varnish them, okay, the moment you go and put them in storage, the moment you nudge a model against them, yeah, and look, you know, that's not going. You can't rub that out, you know, scratches show. Yeah, so you'll have to forgive me that on the photos because I did that to show you what I mean, why it needs varnishing. It's not Mel's fault, that's not... A lot of it may be mistakes. And there's a lot of mistakes in all of my builds, but that was purposeful. That one was a mistake. <laughs> I might actually have to touch that one up because it's actually on the front. Oh, damn. No, in for a penny, in for a pound. Right, so Pro XL, it's a car lacquer, it's really good. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to watch, I'm going to give it a spray coat with this. Yeah, and then what we'll do is we'll come back and I'll show you the last little bits of adding some foliage to it just to round it all up. Yeah, right. Back in a sec. All varnished up. There you are. That look beautiful. Right, if I bring it up, yeah, you can see my scratch marks. See the difference? Fast improvement. Now, obviously, you know, if you want it really tough, you're gonna have to give it a couple of layers. I've only done one thin layer on this, yeah, because it's the demo piece. Yeah, with the Turf War Z board, I did, what you, three coats on it to make sure it's really, because it's gonna be a demo table, which means it's gonna take some hammer, you know what I mean? But, overall, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Right, next job. We need to add a little bit of foliage. Now, obviously we've weathered it up, we've given it that sort of apocalypse look, but yeah, there would be plant growth. Now, it's all concrete at the bottom, yeah, so we've got no planters or grass to overgrow. But what we do have is corners, etc. Now I've got a couple of things here. Yeah, I have a little bit of clump foliage and a little bit of flock. Yeah, all mixed in. This is quite light stuff. Okay, I don't even know where it's from. I think it's my own mix to be truthful. I've just blended it up. Yeah, on top of that, we've, I've got some tusks from Army Painter. Yeah, they'll look quite nice. I've got some really light, what you call it, tree foliage from Javis. Yeah, and that'll look nice. Yeah, and I've got a little bit of PVA just on the top. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and this is very much like when you paint miniatures. It's a spot color. We don't need to put a whole load of grass down, we just need to break it up. And I've gone with lighter colours because it's a good way of contrasting the darkness of the building and bringing it up a little. Obviously, if you do modelling somewhere where it's quite damp and dark, yeah, you want to go with the darker colours. Now, so, what we're going to do is we're going to concentrate in corners, okay? But on top of that, we're going to look for where we've made mistakes, okay? And we're going to fix those with our clump foliage. Exactly the same as we did do with every other terrain piece. Okay, so a little bit of PVA, a little bit of clump, and we'll crack on, eh? Bring it back shortly. The difference a little bit of green makes, eh? Yeah, so there you have it. Easy peasy. Now you'll notice I've just gone for the corners, the edges, and then just a little bit of broken up stuff just on to break up that wide greyness. Yeah, with all these buildings, it's all about breaking it up. Okay, it's not about how good you do it, it's about breaking up the large areas because if you just break them up, they look great, absolutely great. Yeah, overall, I'm quite pleased with that. Right, let's wrap this up, eh?
So guys, it really is as simple as that. Yeah, starting off we took the Sarissa Precision Buildings, yeah, and we started to do things like blocking out the windows, boarding them up, either putting shutters on, but basically, yeah, negating them from us to having to paint windows and that sort of stuff. Yeah, we didn't need the inside of the building, so we don't need the windows. Yeah, moving on from that, we moved on to the Army Paint to Spray Paints, yeah, particularly that fur brown, because it does produce a wonderful terracotta look. After that, yeah, we moved on and we block coloured, yeah, and then we didn't really do that much painting. The only real painting that we did on this was we stippled the grey areas because they were too large, yeah, so they needed breaking up a little bit, and then watch look, we did a little bit of orange just on the watch on those black railings ready to prep it for our washes. Now that's where the real detail came in. We used a, an umber wash, yeah, all over it, just to get some basic shadow. It went in all the cracks, giving us our bricks, it went in around the windows, giving us our shading. And then after that, we came in with a specific wash where we used to dirty up the bottom of walls, do our mud streaks, and basically break up those large areas. Once the washes were in, yeah, it was time to break the areas up a bit more with a bit of graffiti. And remember, there's loads of different options for graffiti. Yeah, obviously I did it with an airbrush because it's quick and easy and you can get sort of a spray effect. But you've got the stencils, you've got the acrylic pens, you've also got, what you call it, the transfers. Yeah, so you've got lots of options for getting graffiti on these. And if worse comes to worse, just get some felt tips. You know, you can always go over them in the future, guys, you know what I mean? All right, moving on from the graffiti, after that it was time to actually, pro act to actually seal it. And you saw the effect the varnish had, and it's important you give these buildings a good varnish. I actually recommend probably three coats over three days, yeah, if it's going to get heavy play. If it's your own set, you can get away with one or two, okay? If it's a diorama piece, you can get away with one, yeah, because it's not been handled. The more it gets handled, the more you need to prep it, the more you need to prime, not prime it, you need, the more you need to varnish it and seal it. Yeah, I don't recommend watered down PVA for sealing MDF pieces. Yeah, one, it darkens them too much, and two, if it can get into the MDF in some places, yeah, it can cause the MDF to expand through soaking, and you don't want that, okay? It ruins the look of your buildings. So, moving on, that we varnished it, and then finally, yeah, we came in with a little bit of flock and foliage, just as a spot colour to break up the darkness of it. You remember, you can go darker if you want to, and it fits your theme. But more importantly, yeah, to hide our mistakes where our washes on the floor were a bit too excessive. Yeah, but overall, the results were brilliant. So that's it, guys. The only thing that's left to do on this particular piece is I need to go in with a little bit of watered-down PVA and just firm these clumps and stuff up, yeah? I forgot to mention that, but I'll do it before watch click before I head home today. It'll get done, guys. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> it will. Yeah, but that's the last thing I needed to do on this. But like I say, I want to keep that nice and light, yeah, because I don't want those tide marks that you get from watered down PVA on MDF. Yeah, above all, yeah, when you're working with these buildings, yeah, stick with your spray, you watch what varnishes, you know what I mean? So that's it, guys. That's how I did all those Turf War Z buildings, and pretty much all these techniques that you saw to create all the building, to do all the work on those buildings, I have covered in this video. Now obviously this is not an advanced painting video, this is how to take a load of different simple techniques, combine them to get some awesome results. So as always, yeah, if you have suggestions and you think I should have done things otherwise, in the comments guys. And if you've got any questions on what I did do, in the comments guys. Obviously like it if you like it, share it if you know anyone this will be helpful for. And then finally, yeah, the shout out, yeah? If this video has helped you, please consider supporting the channel. Now this channel relies on one in a thousand folk being good folks and actually putting their hand in their pocket and throwing a dollar out my way, yeah, to keep the lights on, to keep the cameras rolling and to give me the time to build these things and to edit the footage and do all the YouTube stuff. It just simply wouldn't be possible without your support. So if you really do like these videos and you'd like to see more of them, you'd like to see them in better quality, which I'm, I'm getting better, guys, yeah, then what you call it? Jump either on Patreon, yeah, the links will appear, either Patreon $1 a month, you can cap the amount, it's, it's dead easy, or if you're not into a regular thing, remember PayPal link below, you can send a one-off as a gift via PayPal. It all helps to keep this all going, and me bringing these great tutorials for you. I'm keeping this happy smile and Mel in this happy place. So, with that, enjoy your building, I've enjoyed the building, I've enjoyed making this video, everyone's enjoying themselves, you have a cracking time, and yeah, I'll see you soon, guys. All the best. Ta-da.